We've got Elena Osborne coming up right now. Hello, everybody. This is Derek, and with me today is the only man who will eat old man's beard on the trail to try to get his feet to look like hobbit feet, Carl <laughs> Mandrioli. What, buddy? Welcome Peter. to the Backpack Delicious Podcast, everybody. With me today is Derek Somerville. He's a man that believes Gimli's father was found by the trolls at night because he was glowing the dark. Wow. Um, mm. Okay. That mm. was painful, but we press on. It's okay. Yeah, um, you kind of have to read the books to understand that. I know. You're I think I'd rather be like I'd rather be stabbed by an orc or something okay, than wow. hear that again. That wow. was horrible. New Zealand um, episode, folks. We have a New Zealander on our show coming up. Elena Osborne. I'm excited. That's I'm excited. right. Yeah. Any anything else in New Zealand? I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. I'm all about New Zealand. Derek and I have both been to New Zealand. I'm sure Derek will talk about it a lot during the interview I'm, because any excuse he has to talk mm. about himself and his own stories, he's gonna he's gonna take it right. Ouch! Ouch! Wow! Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> Am, I I Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Who doesn't want to talk about New Zealand? Exactly. I mean, wow. Exactly. All right. All right. Uh, so, real quick, what's your New Zealand story? So, like, you went. Why did you go there? And went, how long ago was this? This was in uh, 03, 04. Uh, yeah. I lived there. A long like a, time ago. It's it like, like, a, it's like back when you were sixty. Yeah, it was like a missionary discipleship training school thing. It was like a year when we went all over the place. Um, okay. So got to see a lot of things. It was great. Right. That's a great story. Great yeah. story. So I'm, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Very it's dramatic. It's not about me today, Carl. It's, it's not about me. Okay. <laughs> um, I did a teacher exchange to Australia, and we were over there. It's about 10 years ago. We visited New Zealand, and I like New Zealand so much better. I actually considered sabotaging my wife's passport so they couldn't send us back. We just had to stay. Huh. But, how, how long did you go over there for? Like a week? Yeah, like eight days or so. Okay. Not I don't know if that time. counts, but um, we'll, well, we'll maybe do it. Like if you only go for eight days, it doesn't count going there? Does it? Maybe a little okay. bit. Okay, high standards from Derek. There you go. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Okay, so I, so real quick, before we jump in here, I have to let you yep. know that we just got some recent feedback from like on YouTube from an uh, episode we put out a couple weeks ago with Alice Ford from Barry N., and so I'm just going to okay. paraphrase. He had a comment. He was a little frustrated by your interview style. He actually thinks you should get better at interviewing and huh. stop interrupting the guest. Huh. Barry so, said that. Huh? Barry said that. Okay. Do you have a, I don't know. I, Are you I've making got a reaction this, to it, but I want to let you share. First. Is this your, is this one of these things where you're making up who Barry is and you're just, no, no, no this is real. You can go on. Oh, this is real. Know. This is real. No, I don't need to do that. But that's a good question though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair question. It's a fair question. <laughs> what do I have to say about it? You know, yeah. I don't really interview a lot, so maybe I'm a little rusty bear. Um, if you have any coaching tips for interviewing, I'm up and open to it. Um, but, uh, his tip is just to stop interrupting. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. No guarantees on that. It's not going to happen. No. No, uh, I will. I will say that uh, the interviews that we do always better when Derek's there. Always better. So you know what? And and behind the scenes of the interviews, this didn't happen with Alice. Alice was actually a great guest. But we have had guests in the past where they are either struggling for an answer, and it's very painful for Derek. So Derek tries to fill in the gaps, which is reasonable. <laughs> um, or if you ask him a simple question, they could go on for thirty minutes. That's not going to happen on our show. Like we're a conversational show. So. Uh, Sometimes Derek gets a little aggressive with the interviews, but Do I it? would I'd rather have that than passive. So so Derek, I say just you be you, man. Keep you on can going. edit aggressive easier than passive. Is that what you're saying? And I didn't say that at all. <laughs> I just prefer that. I'd rather have like a like a back and forth conversation. There, I don't know. Like I'm a podcast listener, and so when I listen to other podcasts, I've listened to podcasts because of who the guest is. And you can sure. almost hear the, you know, the host, like they ask a question and they're almost like Here's a question. They hold their breath for a second and the person starts talking. They're like, oh, they're, they're talking. <laughs> I'm so glad they're talking. Just go, Woo. just talk forever. And it's just not a very compelling conversation, right? right? So you right. want to have somebody who's engaged, who's re responding, reacting. So I would rather have you engaged than, you know. Kind of I think maybe you and Barry ought to put out a little to-do manual on interviewing then, you know? Maybe I'm get trying together. to get have your back and encourage you, I and now you're that. lumping me in with Barry. Well, I just think you know the more the merrier. But I appreciate that, yeah. and um, I'm looking forward to this interview because we'll I. How it goes. So with that in mind, we'll see how you. Yeah. Do. <laughs> well, probably not that great, but we're gonna try it anyway. Well, not with that attitude, but no. we got a Bible verse before we get to that. It's Psalm 139, nine and ten. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there mm. your hand shall lead me, and mm. your right hand shall hold me. Mm. Okay. So this is talking about the sense of adventure and um, 
Yeah. Do you ever have, do you do you hold my hand when we're on an adventure? I'm not the Lord, so I'm not gonna be your hand. Holder. It could be well, it could be figurative. I'm yeah. more like grabbing your arm, like, let's go, stop hiking so slow. Okay. That's yeah. true. All but right. um yeah, so what so this is kind of talking about like adventure in a far off land. What is the next adventure you want to take in a far off land? Japan. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Japan. That's it, that's on the list. Yeah. Okay. What would I do there? Yeah. I would tramp, tramp around, like they say. What does that in, mean? Uh, you miss hiking in New Zealand speech. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't know. You, you might learn that. Um, no, I don't know. I think uh, Japan's just always been a curious place. I just find that, you know, a lot of the Eastern uh, cultures and countries just do things so different. I find that interesting to, to learn yeah, about. Sure. So I think that's on top of the list. But there's, you know, I mean, the list is long, but that's probably on okay. top. What about you? What do you, you want to go? California? Alaska. Yeah, we've been talking about Alaska. Oh, Alaska. Forever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the last is up there. It's yeah. And the issue is just like I, we could figure it out. You and I could, but hmm. trying to get everybody else there is the, is the challenge. We had a hard time challenge. just going to Banff. That was that, is a that was a massive effort. So I um, think a, a smaller yeah. group for Alaska would just be easier. Yeah, in general, for many we'll, reasons. But yeah, we'll, we'll talk work about on uninviting people and, and trying yeah, to let's figure just out how to kick them out. Yeah, delete people from the group. That's that's not very easy exactly. to do. But anyway, all right. Enough about us. Elena Osborne coming up right now. Do it. With us today is an adventure filmmaker, a through hiker, a famous YouTuber, Elena Osborne. Welcome. How's it going? Hello. Yes, I'm good. I'm great. How are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> She's just so relaxed, you know. I'm kind of getting the relaxed vibes. I like oh, it. It's good. That's like right. Dating from from down here. So I'm I'm excited to start this off and ask this: Where are you coming from today? I am coming from the land of the long white cloud, also known as <laughs> Lord of the Rings country. There it is. Uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm in Auckland, which is also known as Tamaki Makoto. Uh, yep. Where I was born and raised and, yeah, currently here. So you don't get annoyed by people just like associating Lord of the Rings with New Zealand. You're just embracing it full on. No, it's a badge of honor. Badge yeah, of honor. For, sure. well, for me, I think because I am such a fan of the films, mm -hmm. I'm a yeah. fake fan and have not read the books. Um, uh, uh, yes, don't exactly. tell anyone. Thank you. I haven't read them either. Forget that. But yeah. I've watched all the behind the scenes and the director's commentary. Anyway, um, for me personally, badge of honor, I think for people who aren't fans of Lord of the Rings, maybe – but um, no, I love it. I love yeah. it. An excuse to quote. Yeah, as you should. I mean, they mm -hmm. filmed a piece of history on your mm -hmm. in your country, you know. So exactly. So let's start. Let's start simple. Are there any? You know, we're from America. Boo! Like boring. You know, and it's not I, so, boring. America's awesome, man. What are you talking about? We, you know, it's we so got our, Where are you guys based? He's in Colorado. I'm in California. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go over some like maybe some terms. Are, are, there, are there any like backpacking or hiking terms that are different in your neck of the woods as opposed to like in general? My neck of the woods. I think, I mean, the one that comes to mind, um, which I personally have never really used a lot, which I've gotten a lot of flack for um, mm. from some fellow Kiwis, uh, mainly online, not in real life, <laughs> um, is tramping. Oh, like, yeah. Hike, tramping. Hiking yep. is known as tramping. I tramping. think maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe because my parents, my dad's, yeah, my parents are both in the US for like 12 years and mm. they weren't really into hike, tramping. Okay. <laughs> so they called, my dad called it hiking, I'm pretty sure. Um, so tramping is a big one. I mean, they, that's just interchangeable. Um, okay. yeah. You're mainly asking for outdoors ter terms? Or yeah, just yeah. Regular terms. Because yeah. there are other phrases which when I've spent time, like more recently, I just went hiking with some friends from the US and I felt like I felt like I needed subtitles for them. They and I was telling them my Kiwi accent is actually much more mild compared to other it is. Kiwis. It is. And yeah. so they couldn't understand me on so many things, but some words that they liked were um chili bin. That's okay. always a classic. What's that? Um a chili bin. So I remember on the PCT one time, you know, you're always kind of you're hankering for some trail magic and, you know, you're keeping out your eyes out for the trucks, you know, and the, um, what do you call it? I'm, I call it a boot. You call it a trunk. Yeah. Um, yeah. You kind of keep an eye out for what's in the back. And there's, wait, wait uh, what does that mean? So there's trucks that are randomly driving by as you're passing roads. And you're well, like, we're going to we dig just... around in somebody's trunk. And no, it's kind of like <laughs> someone driving past totally and different. maybe they had trail magic. Okay. So I just remember yelling out, 
oh my God, there's a chili bin in the ute. And I was, <laughs> he's like, there's a chili bin in the boot of the ute. And um, they were like, what? Like, yeah, they were just like, uh, tip tap, can you uh, repeat yourself? Anyway, yeah. I translated, which is chili bin is just like a cola. Oh, um, okay. Chili. Okay, that makes sense. Chili, chili bin. bin yeah, 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 a yeah. Truck. Boot is okay. the trunk. Um, togs. Togs. Grab your togs. We're going for a swim. I've heard okay. the togs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Togs. You know, Derek. You lived in Mangere. You know. Where it's I was in the hood. I was. In I the just hood. thought th there was like specific backpacking terms, like we call it a Nalgene bottle. You call it dead weight. I don't know. Like I didn't know if that. <laughs> so I don't know if backpacking specific. Aqua backpacking. clip, Lord's best creation. You know? <laughs> wow! Um, wow! Okay. <laughs> I had. Nalgene. I remember. Well, yeah, I remember getting there and all the local guys would just start saying the sweet ass, you know, they'd be like, Oh yeah, sweet ass mate. Yeah. Sweet. I'm like, and I, oh it took God, me a minute to so register. Well. And I was like, sweet as what? Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Like, I don't, what are you talking about? Yeah. It took me probably a good, like a couple of weeks to figure that one out. So. <laughs> sweet ass. Do the accent very well. Oh yeah. Carl, your, your hat, I, sweet ass mate. Hey. There is like a 50% chance. He's going to pretend to be an Australian for the entire. Wait, have this yeah, yeah, recording, it's, Carl. It's, it we have some recording. She she said my accent was was good. So just so you know, okay. It's all about the minimal mouth movement. Exactly. How you nail it. Keep yeah. it in the front. Keep it right there in the front. Yeah, I lived mm -hmm. in Australia for you, and I still could not land the accent. So uh, totally not... different accent. Ew. Completely different country. Uh, wow. Yeah, I, I just can't do accents. It's all disrespectful. Disrespectful. Yeah. Wow. Calm down. Calm down. All A right. Lot of so, so you've hiked in different states. You've hiked in different countries. Different lands. So have you ever encountered somebody on the trail that suffers from anger rage when things don't go their way? <laughs> here we go. There's a story here. Are you speaking from um, yeah, personal experience? <laughs> yeah, I encountered this guy this last <laughs> summer who was smashing trekking poles like they were going out of style. Can you believe it's, that? I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Who would do that? Is, is what's the oddest encounter or experience you ever had out on the trail? Oddest, most odd encounter? Uh... Yeah, there are so many. I mean, there are so many. It, what's interesting <laughs> is like the trail I just most recently did in Utah, Arizona, um, known as the Hey Duke, mm -hmm. um, didn't have many people on it. So didn't have a lot of kind of hiker experiences, though I do remember. Um, no, that's actually irrelevant. Anyway, odd <laughs> encounters on the trail. Um yeah, there are many, but I think about it's not so much an odd encounter, but I just because it's the like the most fresh encounter I've had with kind of other people on a hiking trail was um, we were oh, we were like eight days into a stretch that was meant to only last eight days, and mm -hmm. it was it was looking like it was shaping up to be twelve days. Oh wow. Um, and, you know, we were just super low on food, super low right. on morale, energy. And we come down, uh, we were making our way down to the Grand Canyon and you have to hitch across the Colorado River. So you just kind of kind of mosey on up. What do you call it? Um, when you're yogiing. Yeah, when you're kind of yogi like, <laughs> You're like, you know, you're moseying on up to some rafters and you're like, oh, hey there. Hey there, friends. Um, oh you want to get a ride across, but also we were so low on food. Actually, we were at the point of no longer being kind of, um, I don't know, courteous without asking or like be, yeah. the yogi. We were past that. We were kind of in survival mode where we were right. definitely yeah. like, wait, 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 kinda, are you going to need... stick them up? Are you going to like hold up a raft? Be like, mm -hmm. hey, give us your food and a ride. You know, the Kiwi accent is very disarming. Okay, I true. just so sent true. his tribute um, and as the as the um, sacrificial lamb um, or sheep. <laughs> um, but nice. no, the these people, they just took us in. Um, you get a lot of kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Mm, Perks? Mm, no, mm. like, okay, there are different boats going down. There are people who have like doing personal trips and then you've got the paid oh, trips. The, okay professional trips um right. a group of rafters just were like oh come on board come on in yeah. um and took us under their wing they were doing this beautiful like memorial trip for one of their friends and That's just cool. like fed yeah. us gave us 
alcohol gave us they were trying to offer me their shoes anyway it's not an odd encounter but it was their just shoes. an encounter that was that's pretty yeah odd. well my shoes were just uh decimated by that point um You're like stinky or just actually torn up i mean yes but Both. also Both. like yeah. they're, they're like you if you want to get on that on this raft get rid of them. <laughs> that's uh, hideous no they just um they, the whole bottom tread had come off, okay. which I feel like, wow. is, which I have since realized is like 30% of the weight of a shoe. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was yeah. walking on a sponge and that sponge was walking through the Grand Canyon with the ground heat at like 120 no. Fahrenheit. Because no, right. now nice. I've pre-converted for you here. <laughs> um, pre -converted. Slash, yeah. <laughs> slash Andy only had Fahrenheit uh, thermometer. Anyway, um, and so... Yeah, they just they just felt really sorry for us. I think um, our legs are badly scratched up. They just mm. were like, take everything. Anyway, not an odd encounter. Wow. I've many. No, that's I've a many, helpful um, encounter right there. Okay, yeah. It was a, Except more, for the shoes part, encounter. like here, use different shoes. You, you guys must have looked in a sad way. I mean, yeah. I think just... so. I think my my like the state of my legs. There's still I still have scars all over them from this trail. Wow. I just okay. don't. I think they were very quite concerned. <laughs> really. That's true, right? That's so intense. yeah, that that might have been in the same spot. So Derek's actually rafted the Grand Canyon, and he got attacked by some chili bins in like <laughs> through some rapids and almost died by getting hit in the head with uh... these like metallic. Chili bins, if I'm using okay, the phrase yeah. correctly. Chili bins. That, that could have been the same spot, Derek. Incorrect. Uh, yeah, it might have been. You know, it's a pretty uh, wild ride down that ra that river. So. <laughs> Do you remember the the name of the rapid? Oh, I want to say it was like Rapid. Um, <laughs> it means the rapid. There, there's Rapid 204. There was Lava. <laughs> this sounds made up. Lava. <laughs> No, lava was like one of the bigger ones. <laughs> Wait a second. I think we're on to something. Did you really river raft the Grand King? Did, did Ellen Correct. just catch you on a story? You get De me. Yeah, Derek's no. not shy about making up junk on the podcast and pretending it's real. So this could rapid be a thing. Yeah, I just pulled out rapid, rapid 204. 204. 204. Can't think of the name. I'll just, I'll just associate a number with what, it. What was the biggest rapid you encountered? Do you, do you recall the name? Me? Uh, I do not recall. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two, or, two or three. Um, no. The, then I feel like if somebody said the name, I'd be like, yes, it's that one, but I can't be sure. I didn't even but, know the names. Yeah, they oh, all have names. All wait, have names. Um, the, the one before Kanab Creek? Mm, the okay. ones before Kanab Creek, if you remember that. But is Kanab um, Creek a real place, Derek? Is that really a place or is she tricking you right now? Was this trail even a trail? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know if I said yes or no, Kerr. You didn't <laughs> go. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Cool. <laughs> we're not invited. Yeah, but the the, the rabbits were quite like they were kind of sketch. And the boat I went on, it was actually like there were three, two persons to raft, but then they just stowed us on them. So I was mm. on the raft mm. with two these two Sean's and I knew okay. I should have known from that moment that I was in for it because <laughs> what I shame. didn't realize is that one of the Sean's was very Irish and also okay. the, he was the one driving, uh, staring and he was also very drunk. So Ooh, on, on, on this yeah. raft, it's very, you know, it's very Irish, very charming, but, um, yes, on, we, they asked me if my um, camera was attached and I was like, yeah, of course it's attached. I'm not going to just, you know, <laughs> hold it willy nilly. Right, um, yeah. I think they also assumed I found out that my camera was uh, waterproof. Uh, it really? very much was not. Hmm. And I oh. found myself grasping onto the side of a chili bin, uh, holding on for dear life, kind of like um, 90 degrees. I was, wow. Yeah, 90 degrees to the water yeah. as we almost flipped. Um, yeah, it could, it's wild. Just my water. boat. Was but the chili yeah. bin attached to the raft? Were, were you it ever was, in any danger of getting attacked by one of those things? If I had not held on to that chili bin, I think I may have drowned. No, yeah. no. You hear that, Carl? But okay. The chili bin saved my life. And chili bin incident, saved lives. Unfortunately, maybe not your case. I can attest. Theory, but okay, okay, it did save your life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, he, yeah, yeah. No, no it actually, he, no, it actually almost killed me. Actually, yeah. So you had two mm -hmm. very different chili bin stories, very opposing stories. Mm -hmm. One was a lifesaver. One was a potential like life threatener. Right? She's been through it all. You know, talking about your story con contrast. Mine, mine almost <laughs> killed me. I was holding on to it eventually, and then I oh. fell 
in between. It was okay without using the word chili bin fifty times. It was it was a row of two ginormous ice chests that was holding all of the food and everything oh. for everybody on board. So and maybe Carl, are you using that word wrong? Chili bins? You said it was a soda. Anyway, uh, so I we were going it down. Chili bin? No, I thought that, I thought it was the ice chest. Am I wrong? She said it was like a soda, cola. No, no, no. It's a okay. it's a cooler. Correct. Cooler. Correct. Oh, cooler. Uh, My bad. A okay. cooler. Cooler. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Well, Not a we're, cola. We're still working on comprehension. So Derek's still, he's working uh, on it. Carl please. just finished spelling his name correctly for the first time. Uh, so no, I we were going through one of the rapids, obviously. I think it's a class four or five. And I fell in between the uh, two sets of ice chests and the boat. And I jumped in and literally jumped out within a couple seconds. And the boat folded. And those, those chests like smacked each other. And I would have oh. been right in the middle of them. So was, action right. movies have used that as an example for scenes. Wow, so, that is that, yeah. so I would have died for sure. I'm, there's no way I would have lived. Yeah, yeah or that's been, definitely some final destination. It was <laughs> sketchy. Like it was sketchy. And then nobody really said anything. It was just like everybody went on their way and nobody, you know, because you're in the middle of the river and nobody was paying attention to like the 15 the year old kid that falls in between the uh, oh, chili you were 15. I was 15. Yeah. I was a baby. I was wow. a little baby. I was like seven years, years ago. ago. We had a flash yeah. flood and the chili bins almost killed me. Flash <laughs> flood. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. This is not about you. Let's, let's, let's shift it back here. <laughs> Focus <laughs> next over a uh, I don't know if you've ever had one. But, um, <laughs> have you ever been out there? <laughs> you know, have you ever been on a raft? Do you know what a raft is? Uh, but he my, has seen more hobbits than you, so. That's <laughs> true. My, I, honestly, my whole takeaway from both stories is, was Derek even really there? Or did he just make up that story like before and now like kind of restating it? Those are good so. comprehension skills you get there. That's nice. Um, All right. Let's, let's, let's move okay. on. You mentioned let's, the hobbits again. We'll, we'll talk about hobbits again. Okay. So in one of your videos, you made a comment that um, New Zealanders were either in Lord of the Rings or they know somebody who was. So is that is that like an exaggeration or is that really true? A hundred percent fact. Really? <laughs> of course. Who do you know? Like, were you, were you one of the, like, you know, you must have been really young at the time. Were you one she of the kids? Elf. I was thinking you were one of the kids like jumping around with the fireworks, you know, in, in Hobbiton. Oh, with... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, Peter Jackson is my uncle. Um, okay. Wow. Yeah. Richard Taylor is my cousin. Okay. Um, <laughs> that sounds so believable right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying it. Carl Urban. Carl Urban is my brother-in-law. Uh, um, sure. I'm just going to continue name dropping people I have no connection to. Yeah, okay. no. So I think it's pretty, honestly, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. I, my friend, okay. I actually just made him become my friend because I wanted to prove to myself how small um, New Zealand is. And right. I was watching, oh, I think it was Return of the King mm -hmm. um, in lockdown in 2020 with okay. my flatmates. And yeah. my flatmate pointed at, oh, my God, I forgot his character name. This is so bad. Um, the, you know, Theodore. <laughs> Gimli. Gandalf. <laughs> oh, the big... um, <laughs> no, okay, Theodore's um, who? Theodore's right hand man. You know. Oh, the older guy, like the yeah. beardy. What's yeah. his name again? Oh, Wormtongue. Figwit. No, I'm just kidding. Figwit? Um, is it Wormtongue? No. Is it is the the King of Rohan you're talking about? His right hand man. Yeah, he is like yes, another. He's like but... a, like, like a good guy. Right yeah, the man. good guy. Right oh, the good man. guy, right hand man. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Man. Did you um, and you knew him or your friend well, knew him? I didn't, but I was like, oh, surely I could just send him an email and become friends with him because I learned that he had hiked Te Aroa, oh. the Trail of New Zealand. Yeah. And I was kind of at that point still contemplating whether I should do it or not. And I was like, you know what? Mm. It's good to kind of talk to people who've done it. Slash, I wanted any excuse to talk to this guy who was in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So I sent him an email. Um, he responded like within the day. And I was wow. like, sweet, can I come around and have a cup of tea? And he was like, yeah. So I went around, filmed <laughs> a little interview with him essentially trying to get him to convince me to hike Te Aroa. I was kind of like 80% in by that point. Right. Uh, nice. And then he showed me all his Lord of the Rings memorabilia. Oh, and how, nice. he was like, how he's still in best friend or like best mates with Aragorn's uh, real son. Um, okay. slash Vigo Mortensen. Anyway, all this stuff where I was like, wow, I'm so close to these people now. But um, <laughs> yeah. So in your mind, anyway. right. In your mind. Yeah. Did, yes. he, did, did he try to it. confiscate your shoes as well when you, when you met him? Uh, yeah, I mean, he was like, "You don't need those. You clearly yeah, you not, just walk around in bare feet." Right, they're not right. Hobbiton shoes, Carl. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the PCT for a minute here. This was your first big through hike, right? And what? So what? What inspires you to travel halfway across the world and do one of the biggest trails 
for your first hike? Mm, what not the what first possessed? first hike or first first through hike, through right? through hike? That's what yeah. I meant. I mean, yeah, quarter life crisis. Honestly, quarter life um, crisis. <laughs> well, okay. it's like it's I think one of those <laughs> things. It's funny how many. I feel like 25 year olds. I mean, the age is very, very um, yeah. prevalent as well as a lot of broken hearts, many, mm. many broken hearts on that trail. Um, I was definitely <laughs> trail of tears, the other trail one of them. Tears. Yeah. Oh, I was wow. like, when I yeah. first said, I was like, maybe I should just film people with broken hearts and make like Ooh. broken hearts of the PCT. Cause there Ooh. were many. Um, no, I think it's like the classic story. You're kind of at a stage in your life where you, I don't know, want to do something for yourself. You have kind of tasted adventure in other ways, but now you're ready for something really big. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, yeah. something shifts in your life where you're like, you know what? I don't have a lot of responsibilities right now. I think I can just go do this thing. Mm-hmm. I'd actually mm-hmm. spent the previous year in the US. So I had um, lived there for just over a year in from the end of 2016 and I just got back to New Zealand beginning of 2018. Um, And I don't know. I just wanted to spend more time in the U S any excuse because the U S is awesome. Derek, just FYI. (laughs) It's it's how I felt about New Zealand. Any excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. It it has, it's, it's got its things. Um, And so (laughs) I just, (laughs) it's got its little parks and it's yeah. Little nature. trails (laughs) trails <laughs> <True>. um <laughs> yeah little, there's mountains little. down there there's the baby you got, trails you got mount doom down there oh true, yeah man. Watch oh sorry out. i was talking about the u.s i was talking about the u.s oh um, stay with us carl comprehension sorry sorry, again. sorry. sorry. comprehension, comprehension. Bad, bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, third grade level third grade in level. some world in some worlds we'll have like the ai tech where it's pre-converting my accent into an american one as you hear me <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're like no. six months out from that yeah i mean a couple six months. <laughs> um yeah i mean that's why i mean it's like okay, why does yeah. anyone do anything why did you okay. come to new zealand adventure so then i guess that leads me to the next question is like what so you've hiked you've hiked in america you've hiked in new zealand what is like the what would you say like some of the biggest differences are about backpacking in u.s as opposed to new zealand like what was is there something um i think well one of the things that stand out is just uh there's a lot more wild camping in the U S there's a lot more Mm. freedom camping in that sense with New Zealand. We have a lot, I mean, we're a small country, but, um, the land and like these areas are protected in different ways where, Mm. um, there's, I, I think just the rules are a bit more stricter about, camping and really because like, i found i found when we went around the south island like we camped uh on a guy's pig farm and nobody said anything and then we camped uh by turtle <laughs> nobody bay said nobody said anything <laughs> so, i mean probably we were camping illegally and we don't even know it but um i mean okay so <laughs> pig farm yeah we're, I mean, just, we're just all over the place i camped I mean, on a guy's sheep farm i mean <laughs> Nobody it still kidding. sounds the most, Probably. yeah. Like, I should have got arrested, I mean, you're saying. I, I mean, saying. no, in terms of places, people, I would say want to camp, but honestly, I would camp on a pig farm and a sheep farm. But <laughs> yeah. I just mean more so in, like, the really popular places. Like, you wouldn't find just people, there are these great walks in New Zealand. It's right. very strict with where you can sleep. You have to sleep in the huts. Otherwise, these very designated campsites. PCT, right. it's it's very, like, free fall, right? I mean, they say true, camp true. in the spots that are established, um, but there's a lot of them. Um, yeah and but i mean aside from that you know pig farms probably the most ideal spot to camp top of in the new list zealand. if you're coming to new zealand that's like the first place you should go yeah pig um, farm. Uh, old yeah. mates pig farm um wow wow see that carl see that yeah. i mean I, that, see that here's is... the thing here's my take on that is because if you read books or at the time that i was there when you read books about how to travel spe- specifically around the south island of new zealand it was like oh yeah just you know pull your camper van over wherever and you can just crash out for the night. But then when we got there, that was true for some parts, but then they had gotten more strict and people didn't really treat the land appropriately. So they started to really crack down. I think Derek, you were there before me. So I'm guessing it was looser. Yeah. And then I think it was because I would guess, of Derek, they changed. You're like, welcome. Exactly. Was, yeah. What, yeah. You probably left your stuff on the pig farm, left some trash. Do people, do, do people just still hitchhike at willy nilly and nobody cares over there? Or is that? Yeah. It's yeah. very like hitchhiking here is so easy. And I actually, <clears throat> the first time I hitchhiked was in the US. I've never done it in New Zealand. Um, I mean, I wow. did it. Yeah, it was for the PCT. I guess I'd, I never needed to 
previously. Like I'd always had a car or something. Mm-hmm. Um, like I wouldn't even think of doing it here ever. Really? But over there, over there, I was like, yeah, let's go hitchhike. It was it was such yeah. a different. It's so weird. We had we had single females leave our team and just be like, I'm just gonna go wing it for six months and hitchhike all over the place. Like, yeah, it was yeah. such a different say. world. So hmm. and it's still that way. It's that's cool. Um, that's good to hear. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, and like my friends who just visited, we like a lot of the hikes you end in random spots. You kind of either have to book a shuttle or you have right. to get a rental car. Right. And my first protocol was always like, "Oh, why don't we just hitchhike?" And they were both right. like, "What? <laughs> you don't hitchhike? <laughs> why? Yeah, um, we, interesting. Don't do that." My, my first, or I don't know if it's my first one, but one of my first experiences hitchhiking was in Sequoia National Park, mm-hmm. and it was actually New Zealanders that gave me a ride. So I'm not sure yeah. how that relates but it does go. yeah mm. all right so one thing that we like to ask about i mean you your whole you know you got stories of long trails in new zealand and the pct of course and these are on your youtube channel so these are very well chronicled and they're very well done um it's nice to have something like that done by you know a proper filmmaker like yourself mm-hmm. and so so if you want to check those out those are like i think i watch your your youtube channel i want to say it was a couple years ago when i found it and i was yeah i kind of sucked in episode by episode but we always like to ask about like the gear that stood the test of time on the trail. I mean, you put gear oh, to the yeah. test day after day mm. and and sometimes month after month. And so what, what are the best pieces of gear that you'd recommend to backpackers? And then on the flip side of that, what's gear that surprisingly failed you while you're out there? <laughs> oh, is, well, is, yeah. Yeah. There's an aqua clip on that list. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh man, I appreciate your uh, words. Um, very humbling. Uh, yeah. So, okay, gear that has stood the test of time. Honestly, okay. So I still have my duplex from the PCT. Mm. Okay, I okay. my um, I had these black diamond cork poles that lasted two really? through hikes. I've now wow. had to get rid of them because okay. they did collapse on me. Did you break them over anything? Uh, just Shatter. over, I mean, there was a chili bin like lodged chili in bin. one of the rivers and it just, <laughs> just turned me over. <laughs> chili bins do it all. They'll get you. Um, yeah. so I got rid of those. Uh, like I saw the same kind of like camera gear, uh, camera clip that I used. Okay. Most of my stuff I just reuse. Um, sometimes because now I have put videos online, sometimes gear companies will send me stuff and that's often when I'll try something new. Right, um, yeah. but I often, unless something's broken, then I won't really just like, you know, go buy something as most people don't hopefully. Right. Um, but let's see other things have lasted. I guess those things have lasted. My camera has surprisingly survived all my hikes. My, the Osmo pocket that I used on the PCT did not survive. The DJI so well. Osmo? Yeah, I kind of stopped using it, but they've just released a number three and I'm low-key very interested in it because it looks (laughs) much better than number two. And I kind of just had stopped using it, but they're so easy, so easy. Um, And then... And what was the camera? You mentioned the camera lasted. So, I mean, you're you're lugging that around quite a bit. Yeah. You know, uneven trails, it's shaking. Do you remember... What the name of that one is? Oh, uh, so I had the I have this Sony A7S three. I use that yeah. on the on Tiarado as well as Hey Duke, but I think I had version two on the PCT. Okay. Um, but I remember I was like I was trying to sh- um get a new lens, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll trade in my old lens. So I took it to a camera gear shop to kind of see what I could get for it, and I just got a message being like we cannot take this lens i'm sorry man (laughs) so that clearly was not in good condition and very embarrassing that it was worth zero dollars i was like come on this is fine i've only just dragged it the length of the country through mud and rain and were you storing your shoes at nighttime maybe um Mm -hmm. and within within. (laughs) and the and gingy toes you know just all around it um makes sense yeah But okay, something that didn't last. Okay, ah, uh, like pillow, sleeping mat, I've sleeping never, bag. Oh, okay. I've never had tent. a pillow on trail, but my I wow. took the. Wait, you've never had a pillow on trail? No. Are you using the stuff sack with like extra clothes and shoes? I've got my little. I've got my buff, and I'll just shove whatever's left. The in buff there. does it again. <laughs> Carl's classic. least favorite piece of gear, and she just. What? So things are spilling out both ends, and that's it. sufficient for you to get a good night's sleep. Carl, you just tie the ends if you need to. It's called tie making a knot. Ends. 
fold okay. it and how do you ever expect to be on survivor if you carl's don't look <laughs> Elena, not on survivor. Carl, carl still uses go. he still uses velcro shoes he's not oh, tying no. a lot of tying a lot of things so <laughs> he's got to figure out carl come on yeah it's it's hard it's a thing it's hilarious okay um, so the buff is your pillow and you're stuffing like clothes in there and it's deflating throughout the night and, and you're still getting to I've learned <laughs> I, I have learned that the pillow is is game changing so maybe that's the next piece of gear I acquire okay. for my next trail okay. um but I still have not committed to that but the things that did oh I I took the neo air the uber light the like mm -hmm. the blue yeah. one and yeah. it just it didn't work for me I'm huh. I'm not the most careful with my gear uh also mm. desert has a lot of spiky Oh, yeah, right, right, right. so um yeah they didn't last for me very well maybe in the um maybe for somebody who's better at looking after their gear the okay. the uber light will be good um but i like the orange one and then i the the one okay the thing that i just kind of just got rid of and was like never yeah. again not for yeah. me ever um was the wasn't it wasn't anything to do with the, with the quality of it it's just me um it was I carried a gimbal. Okay. Oh. On yeah. the first, I think maybe, I don't know, not even that long. First two weeks of Te Araro in New Zealand. That it was, was just a mission too heavy, too annoying to set up when you're hiking by yourself and you're kind yeah. of trying right. to hike with friends and you're like, guys, wait, I'm just going to spend five minutes setting up this gimbal. <laughs> right. um, Carl knows you know, all about that. I do know that yeah, actually. <laughs> you're going to lose friends very quickly, which I'm sure you're also very yeah. familiar with Carl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, that is correct. I lose friends daily. Every episode he almost lost we release, me over the gimbal. Yeah, it's just that's set hilarious. Up so well. Wow. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. yeah New Zealand for the win. Okay. For those who don't know, the gimbals are just these like camera stabilizers. They have lightweight ones that can, you know, for your phones that are as little as like a pound. Mm. But I'm guessing you brought more like two pounds. Is my prediction. Yeah. Yeah. It was not good. But, just more um, hassle. Just more hassle. Yeah. yeah, on the Hadrick Trail, we kind of all chose, we all had like our weapon of choice. I went with the humble tripod, which was much, much quicker set up. Um, right. My buddy Andy had the gimbal and he had, okay. he was well versed in it. So he was not, um, yeah, not as slow as I was. Right. But that's the plight of the filmmaker, right? Like you got to bring extra camera gear, your pack's going to be heavier as a result, but you're going to get some shots that nobody else is going to get. So that's the, the, you know, positive side of things. So mm -hmm. you guys, I mean, you get yeah. some great shots. So, okay. There's some beauties in there. All right. So it's not hard to get great shots though in New Zealand. So that's true. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. But she got great shots on the PCT as well. So, so to recap, okay. so you had the Z packs duplex that's still holding up. Did you use that on your yep. recent trip as well? No. So I had the, I think it's called the, uh, Hexamid top. Okay. I just had a little top. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the first time I used a top 10 and that was pretty sweet. I mean, Utah is so dry, like in New Zealand, I don't know if I would use something like that because of the condensation is just, right. it's a lot. Um, but when you're mainly cowboy camping as we did, um, having an option for th rogue thunderstorms mm -hmm. in the desert, um, was handy. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's fun. But I, I do like when you set up a duplex or a tent, you're like, oh, my safe space. You know, it's like <laughs> your little haven. Right. Um, true. Yeah. But there's true. some for that. that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And what, what water filter and stove did you bring and how did it, how did those hold up? Um, so I, I've only ever used the Sawyer as a, a filter. A squeeze? But, yeah. Okay. Good boy. Um, and that held up. Okay. Uh, we filtered a lot of water that was like chocolate. Mm, water chocolate yeah. milk oh, okay. very tasty um very some very salty water too okay. um and so that that lasted it's like the only filter i've used so far i've heard good things about the catadine as well um right. but my only experience is with the soya okay. and okay. then the stove we actually had a collective stove and a collective pot okay <laughs> so i'm trying to remember i think it like the one i still have which i still use to this day is the um msr pocket rocket yep um, yeah oh yeah and that's and that's great i've also one. heard good things about the jet boil um which yep. a lot of friends not have for too. yeah not for through hiking probably though I would, yeah <laughs> yeah <I would> <laughs> so we we think it's a really good option for it. large group 
stuff. Yeah. If you're going to share the stove and you're going to, you know, spread it out, so it's going to boil water fast. A lot of people kind of, you know, spread that weight out. But other than that, I don't know that I would bring it personally. Mm. So, mm. okay. Mm. All right. Yeah, so there you right. go. So, so stuff good. that held up, stuff that did not hold up. So there you go. Tips from the pro. Tips from the pro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Elena, what do you have coming up? What adventures do you have coming up? Any stories we have to look forward to in the near future? Mm. Films. Um, Films. Yeah. Plugs. Films. Plugs. So, the Hey Duke Trail, which we just wrapped. When I say just, I mean five months ago. But it actually feels like much, much longer ago. It feels like mm. I didn't even do it, really. Mm. Um, we're working on post-production for that. So, okay. it's an interesting okay. space to be in because... My experience for distribution has mainly been on YouTube, right? which is kind of feels like that's the way the world's going, but also still there's still such, uh, I guess like traditional platforms are still held in such high regard that mm -hmm. there's still the desire. I don't know if it's ego driven or just like prestige or whatever to, to try <laughs> distribute on those platforms. Right, um, right, right. So we're unsure where this will go, but it will be, um, a hiking series we filmed very extensively it's the most I've ever filmed in my life on a trail uh, okay. and four of us with cameras a gimbal wow. a drone wow. a tripod mic setups just right. the whole shebang um, so that that'll be interesting because we don't really know how it's all unfolding but I've just kind of gone back through my journals and rewritten them for narration and hopefully some kind of guiding light for the edit and for the story. Um, so that's, that's something to watch, which will come at some point in time. Okay. Yeah, um, on some platform, maybe not YouTube is what you're saying. Yeah, but I'm sure yeah. it might, it yeah. might end up being YouTube. Um, okay. And then hopefully I am my next kind of hike that I've got my eyes on um is a trail called it's a trail um in japan called the michinoku and it's um a coastal trail it does go through some mountains okay and a lot of town i think it's pretty tame in terms right. of like a wild trail um a lot of onsen a lot of tea yeah. houses maybe you know it's a bougie kind of hike but i'm i wouldn't be <laughs> mad about it um <laughs> you'd be all right yeah i can't see does i go by mount fuji at all did, you, did i miss that or no no it's way it's like um northeast um oh, okay. In the, okay. it's a region called tohoku and it's uh um it's where the huge tsunami was in 2011 and so kind of oh, wow. as a means to bring economy back there they put in this or like built this trail and nice. it looks pretty, pretty sweet. I'd be pretty nice. keen to do that one next year. So that's my dream, but I've also, yeah, working on other things that are non hiking related, but okay. you know, hiking always, always calls. Right. It's always in the back. You'll have to let us know when, when um, that next film is released and where it's released. We'd ha be happy yeah. to plug on our show and let everybody Absolutely. know because yeah. Yeah. Um, Elena makes awesome stuff. And so definitely worth checking out, even kind of cycling back to some of the stuff she's already having YouTube. So we'll have links for that in our show description, but yeah, we're, if you're looking for backpacking inspiration, she's got it for you. So absolutely. All right. Elle, you've Thank been you. so okay. great to have on the show. I know we're just scratching the surface with, with all your adventures, but, um, just, yeah, honors ours to have yeah. you as, as part of our podcast. So thank you for your time. Yes. Yeah, so thank great you. To chat. So great to meet you guys. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Come on Likewise. down. You gotta come back down to New Zealand. <laughs> come gotta, on over. Get your on. Hobbit count up, Derek. <laughs> What's that? You gotta get your Hobbit count up. I know. Yeah, that's right. I know. Well, all right, man. Takeaways. What you think about that? I mean, she's a cool lady. I mean, I think uh, she's she's seen a lot. She's done a lot. She's got a great attitude. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think it's really cool that she films all that stuff too for everybody to kind of get a a, a really first you know, hand look of what some of these trails are like. I yeah. think it's cool that she has um, just a sense of adventure. Some of those stories about the whole like raft. Yeah. You know, ride and like, let me swap your shoes out with my shoe. Like I'm not giving somebody my shoe. Well, I guess I would give somebody my shoes if they really <laughs> needed them. But I, that's what I was telling her. I was like, you guys must've looked like horrible for somebody yeah. to be like, take my shoes. And people love hearing that. Like you must've looked horrible. They love hearing horrible. that kind of comment. Yeah. That's very, you know, she could handle the honesty. She handled it fine. Okay. You, I don't know about, but. All right. I don't know. What do you, you think? find it interesting? Okay. So there's two things. You didn't find it interesting that 
So she she feels like her life was saved by hanging onto the coolers, and your life was threatened by the coolers in the mm. same spot, like the literally chili, the same spot. The chili bins. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't know for sure if it was the same spot, so calm down with that. The river's the same. Come on. You calm down. <laughs> the rip, the same. <laughs> yes, every rapid is exactly identical. Okay. Uh, no, I, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I'm not a river rafter. You know, I mean, it's uh, if the boat is folding in half and there's coolers all over the place, it's, it becomes more of a <laughs> you know this. a threat. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so she's now the second person on this podcast to question the truth telling of your story. Mm, so, mm -hmm. should we read into that at all? I think. Had a hard time comprehending what she was really meaning, so that's that might be that what that was, but I don't know. Uh, I know I was there. I actually think I still have the guidebook they give you when you go down the river, right? Um, and they name every single rapid. I think okay. I still have that book. So can you look it up after the show and kind of circle back in the next episode, and we'll we'll chat about it about the book. Well, just about like the rapid two hundred four, the weird names you had. What were yeah, the names? I like, will. Yeah, I lava. Will. Is that one of them? Lava rapid. I think okay. it's a crystal rapid. That is one that is known for yeah. folding your. Like she was names. not buying any of that. Well, maybe she didn't remember the rapid names. You know, I was. No, I, I don't even them. think she knows the rapid names. She was there hiking. She's just crossing the river. Yeah, exactly. She just wasn't believing you. She just was like, "You're making stuff up to try to connect with me." That's and her choice. I don't. Yeah. That, that's fine. I she put fun of both of us. She said that I was losing friends by the minute. So. She also said I had a fabulous New Zealand accent. So I don't know what. what Takeaway that is for you. That's got to be frustrating for you, probably. So, <laughs> you know. I'm frustrated by your accent. <laughs> Gosh, she has another oh, great yeah. accent to just add to the repertoire. Gosh. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Uh, we'll we'll have a guest on our show we that go. we sense maybe hasn't, you know, listened to our show beforehand. Has another homework. You just come on as an, like an Australian and New Zealander, and you just stay in character the whole time. <laughs> That's no problem. Okay. I want to see you attempt an accent for at least like a solid two minutes and not mm. break character and believe what you're saying. That oh, would be more entertaining. My Folks, my, my friends in Australia, would, that was like entertaining for them. They're like, hey, hey, oh. hey, Carl, do an Australian accent. Good eye, mate. And they're like, they're just laughing at me. The whole Look, time. I mean, we, we could put it out to the, put it to the B&B family. Like, if you want to hear me do a an episode in an accent of Australia, mm. I will do that, no problem. But I think it's way more entertaining to hear you try to do it. Well, I, I can, yeah, but it's not going to, nobody's going to buy it. People are going to buy your accent, so it's not. But you'd have to be serious or whatever you're saying. And then they have to painfully yeah, I don't like you do saying. the whole episode. You're, you're more it's the two actor. minutes, again, comprehension. Oh, two minutes? Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. I so feel like, okay, it. so we had a guest on last year or last season. Kyle hates hiking. Yeah. And I feel like he would come back on the show. You you weren't there for the interview. But if we could line it up where you're there and mm. he's there, I bet he'd be the guy that would not listen ahead of time. I bet so you could just I mean, roll in has, Australian accent. But has he listened to any of our episodes? Then he's going to know. I bet yeah. he hasn't. I bet he hasn't even listened to the one where he was in. <laughs> so, all right. We'll, 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 we'll kind of tuck that away and circle back to that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. All, right. all right. Um. Any other takeaways? No, that was that was a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Um, and so it's really like, I truly, I've watched her stuff, and I really am inspired by her filmmaking and by, by yeah. some of the stuff she's put out on YouTube. So if you right. need inspiration, especially as we get into the winter months, that's when I start watching more of that stuff. Yeah. And then... Uh, Check it out. We'll have the show link or we'll have the YouTube link in the show description. That'd be awesome. We got some trivia yeah. coming up, Carl. New Zealand trivia. Yes. Right after this. If you don't get three out of three, mm -hmm. I will be shocked. Threatening. You're threatening me now. Okay. Uh, I'm not threatening you. It's just more of a <laughs> statement of shock. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, question one. What is the name of the longest trail in New Zealand? <laughs> I don't know. That was mentioned multiple times throughout the episode. Oh, uh, was it? She mentioned multiple trails <laughs> in New Zealand. I, like, this just shows, folks, that he doesn't listen to anybody. No, no, no. I, this Comprehension is, is hard for him. It's hard this for This is a good question. I should know this because I've actually done quite a bit of research on this in the past, but I don't, off the top of my head, there's like a, uh, what was it? I will, when you say it, I'll know it, but yeah. what you got? What is it? It's Te Aurora. Te, yeah. Te Aurora. And she, yeah. it's, it's called The Long Path. It's like right. 3,000 kilometers. Okay. How many That's, miles is that? Uh, I don't know. Alexa. How long is <laughs> 1,800. 1,800. <laughs> Where's Alexa? It's like 1,860 miles. Do you want me to ask Alexa for the truth? I'll ask her right no, now. No, I, I know. You just do mental math. Stop. Go ahead. Go look at it. Look at it. Right. Okay. I said 1,860. Alexa, what is it? What how is far it? is 3,000 kilometers? 1,900 miles. You're incorrect. Okay. 1,900? 
1,900. Alexa's never wrong. As we all know. Is that what you said? I can ask Siri, too, if you want me to ask Siri. All right, so so you were wrong, and Alexa was right. Um, yeah, sorry, and that's not a surprise. So we're we're you're struggling today, struggling yeah. with comprehension, struggling with math. Um, yeah. but I think you can get this next one right. What is the name given to natives of New Zealand? There is a name, uh, the natives. So not the not by. the nickname Kiwis. You're saying not Kiwis. It, it's. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. There's like what Maori. Is, is that there's the Maoris that are like the true natives, and then Kiwis. Did you say Maori? Them, yeah, Maori. I'm worried. I'm worried about you. The the Maori people or the Maori what, people. What, yeah, you don't even know. You're just making. So it up. you are. What are you saying? What is your answer? That one. That the one. Natives. Okay. That's the yeah. The one that starts with an M. I thought you were gonna say like Maui. It sounded like you were saying Maui from Moana instead of Maori. So it's questionable. Okay. Uh, I'll give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. That's, that's nice. It's very generous. And lastly, uh, you should get this at this point. What is the name given to the New Zealand people? The kiwi? The kiwis. Based okay. on the kiwi right. bird, not the fruit, just to mm. clarify. Wow, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Uh, you still only got two out of three. I'm a little shocked um, since she mentioned that trail name about 5,000 times. And you, you normally do pretty good with trail names. Yeah, all this you're stuff. Right. So Yeah, that's fair. I'm a little fair. disappointed. I'll take the pass. That's all right. You take the pass. It should be a fail. Okay. Um, tidbits, man. We got some tidbits. What do you got? Okay, so we got a new review. Okay. And I got to bring it up here, but I, like I'm not, like the the review it's just basically the title says it all, man. Really? This is by Clone Nation. It just Ooh. says more rocky. Okay. More rocky. Okay. Yeah. So, he was on a recent episode where we did kind of a recap of our um Red P Pass FKT attempt. Rocky's challenge to have on the show, especially during football season. But um, this is, yeah, this is kind of like, you know, Rocky's still the most popular guy on the show. He comes on like once or twice a year, and that's, and he needs to be on there more, right? Apparently so. Yeah. He brings the energy, you know? He does. Yeah. If you want Rocky, like if you really want more Rocky, we do have two bonus episodes where he is co hosting mm. um, on Patreon. So if you really want more yeah. Rocky, like he got full blown episodes loaded on there, and Rocky's right. awesome. This is kind of like high school, though, where, you know, I'm walking next to him. People are like, "Hey, can you like move out of the way? I want to talk to Rocky. I want you. <laughs> I want you to go away. Can you? I don't know what your name is, but can you go away so I can talk to Rocky? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeps on going on. Like yeah. that. It's a good All review. Right. Yeah. All right, and then uh, last tidbit is we are going to close today. So after the closing, I've got a video slash audio file from our good friend Richard. Trick fatigue from Tasmania. I figured oh, yeah. while we're going on that side of the world, we got to stick with yeah. that theme. And he's sharing a little story about one of his trips. He likes he likes kind of our theme of like you know how we share the uh, the mess ups or things that don't always go yeah. the right way. So he's going to share some of his. He's not right. he's he's kind of you know he's very humble. He's down. He's not he's not judging all of our our mistakes. He's like you know what here's some of mine. So he's got a story it. to share love to it. close things out. That's all I got. That's all I got. Guys, uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the New Zealand Kiwi episode. I'm going to work with Carl on comprehension and math, and please do, please do. Uh, that is all we have for today. Carl, let's get to study. See you next time. Yeah, good morning folks. Uh, my name's Richard from Tasmania. Um, just here to tell you about uh, a trek we had with uh, not so good consequences after some pretty dodgy decisions, to be honest. Um, so last year we took a three-day trip into a place called the Walls of Jerusalem here in Tasmania. Um, it had warnings all the week about bushwalker water, uh walking alerts because you know the weather was going to be terrible um you know high winds snowfall stuff like that uh we decided to give it a try anyway and um tackle this remote area which was you know when we got there the weather was fine on the friday afternoon um we had six people with us five decided to go straight to camp i decided to take a slight detour and uh, 
and uh, get a nearby peak, which didn't go so well for me in the end of the day. Um, had to camp on myself in the snow, had all the gear so that didn't really phase me too much. But um, there was a river crossing that um, I just couldn't find a safe place to get across that day. So once I did get across, I had wet feet, so I decided just to stop and camp for the night. It took me roughly half an hour the next morning to, to get to the campsite. And um, meet up with the other guys. From there, we uh, trekked through probably, oh, it would have been about five to seven kilometres, I suppose, but the snow was just, you know, knee to waist deep. The track was very hard to find. Um, so it took us about six hours to travel that short distance. We um, stayed in a little hut by Meston Lake called Meston Hut. There we could light a fire. Um, and you know, get warm, dry some of our gear and you know, have a good night's sleep. Uh, that night we had about another two to three inches of snow um, but once again the morning was clear there was no wind no storm clouds or anything like that so we started off early in the morning to get to the next hut which is Junction Lake Hut and um, we were going really well and we decided that we would probably cut our trip short we didn't know what the weather was going to do um, so we started heading back to the car this meant cutting across country um, once again, knee to waist deep snow, no track. Um, it detoured, or shortcut slash detour, took us probably, I don't know, a good couple of hours um, to get back on the track, um, which is called the Moses Creek Track. Moses Creek Track is actually a creek in winter. Um, there's this water, our feet were cold, um, wet constantly wasn't a very nice walk great adventure but looking back on that lot of adventure but it was, you know, wasn't real great at the time um, following the map we had um, we had to do a river crossing which was not a real major issue it was only a little narrow creek so we made it across that quite well um, yeah then we walked around the side of a lake and we had to get back over the creek, which is where our problem started. Um, so leading up to the creek, we well, we were probably quite fatigued looking back on it. And um, yeah, I lost my shoe a couple of times, which will come up in the story a bit later as well. Um, yeah, so we got to the creek. One of our members uh, fell in the creek up to his waist, um, pulled him out and um, at this stage probably only a couple of hours in the car so we thought we'd have another go um, at crossing the creek so we spread out to have a look for a crossing. Another team member thought they found a spot and uh, they ended up going into the drink, they went all the way in up to their neck um, so we pulled those guys, that guy out as well. Um, and you know, we had to start treating our our teammates for uh, hypothermia. In the meantime, we set off our emergency beacon um, because, well, you know, we just couldn't find a spot to get across. We needed some help. Um, we set up an emergency shelter, um, and the six of us camped up there. For the next 11 and a half hours we treated all our patients for hypothermia and after um i got everybody back on track there i noticed that my feet weren't feeling the greatest and we had to actually cut my sock off my foot where it had frozen to my foot and um 
yeah, start treating me for some pretty minor frostbite. Um, during that 11 hours in the tent, um, we learnt that a jet boil will keep the six people warm in a shelter for 11 hours. But we had plenty of food, we were warm, we were dry, spirits were high. Um, what we didn't realise was that the rest of the state had copped a fair battering um, from wind and snow. Um, and that's why it was taking them 11 hours to get to us. Uh, so we found out the next day that search and rescue had, you know, to help um, a whole town nearby where trees had just been blown over. Um, they had to actually cut their way into us. Um, there was probably about 15 down trees along the road to get to the trailhead. Um, they actually had to build a bridge across the creek <laughs> that we um, that we couldn't cross, so that made us feel a bit better. Um, but at the end of the day, we all walked out early in the morning. We started walking out at 3 o'clock in the morning um, through the snow, and it was back at our car by about half past seven. Um, so yeah, everybody walked out, which was a great feeling. But, you know, a couple of decisions we made there, you know, cutting across country probably wasn't the best plan. Um, you know, you probably could have called the day a bit shorter um, to make sure everybody was safe. And, um, you know, could have camped instead of calling the SES. But, you know, we had to do what we had to do. We felt we'd done all the right things. We had a good adventure. Um, but, yeah. It was a really, really good trip. Um, we learnt a lot, that's all I can say.